Homo Academicus is a seminal work by the French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu, first published in 1984. Bourdieu, who was himself a part of the academic field that he studies in this book, critically examines the university as a social space, applying his theories of social practice and habitus to the academic world. His analysis delves into the structure and functioning of the academic field, the power dynamics within it, and the social distinction and hierarchies that are inherently part of academic life. Bourdieu's exploration is grounded in the concept of the field, which in his theory is a structured space of positions in which the positions and their interrelations are determined by the distribution of capital, economic, cultural, social, and symbolic. He suggests that the academic field is one of the social arenas where the struggle for different kinds of capital is evident, and where the agent's positions and practices are determined by their habitus. This habitus, a system of dispositions ingrained through an individual's history and experiences, shapes how academics perceive, understand, and navigate the academic landscape. In Homo Academicus, Bourdieu scrutinizes the French academic field, particularly focusing on the higher echelons such as the university professors and the elite institutions of higher education in France, such as the École Normale Supérieure. He undertakes an empirical investigation into the sociological profiles of professors across different disciplines, analyzing their social origins, career paths, and intellectual trajectories. He reveals that the academic field is not an open, meritocratic space it often claims to be. Instead, it is a domain where social class background has a significant impact on one's academic success or failure. A key theme in Bourdieu's analysis is the idea of symbolic capital, which includes academic prestige, recognition, and honor. He argues that symbolic capital is as crucial in the academic field as it is in other social fields. The pursuit of this capital among academics leads to various strategies and practices, including publication in prestigious journals, the accumulation of titles and awards, and the establishment of authoritative positions within academic hierarchies. These forms of capital are not accessible to all. They are distributed unevenly, thereby reinforcing existing power structures and inequalities. One central argument that Bourdieu makes is that the academic field is autonomous yet interrelated with the broader societal field. While it has its own rules, logic, and forms of capital, it is also affected by external factors such as politics, economics, and social change. Bourdieu examines how the existence of autonomous subfields, such as the social sciences and humanities versus the natural sciences, has its set of peculiar dynamics, each with different degrees of autonomy from external influences. Bourdieu also takes a critical look at the processes of reproduction within the academic field. He demonstrates how the academic elite reproduce themselves through mechanisms like the selective recruitment of newcomers from the same social backgrounds or through the patronage networks where established scholars help their chosen protégés to advance. This self-perpetuation ensures that the academic field remains a largely conservative space where radical change is rare and slow. The concept of cultural capital is essential to understand the reproduction of the academic elite. Bourdieu elucidates how individuals from higher social classes usually possess more cultural capital, which in turn facilitates their success in the academic field. Their ease with cultural codes and practices that are valued within academia gives them an advantage over peers from less privileged backgrounds. Notably, Bourdieu dissects the nuances of intellectual factions within the academic field, showing how different groups and schools of thought vie for dominance and legitimacy. He discusses the diverse strategies that intellectuals employ to gain a foothold in the academic hierarchy, from allying with influential figures to creating new areas of study that challenge existing paradigms. Bourdieu suggests that despite the apparent meritocracy, the academic field operates very much like other societal fields, where power plays, capital accumulation, and struggles for legitimacy are ongoing. He reflects on the contradictions inherent in the academic life where scholars are expected to be disinterested and driven by a pure love of knowledge, while they are also engaged in a competitive struggle for scarce resources and recognition. Furthermore, Bourdieu explores the changes and crises in the academic field, such as the effects of massification of higher education, 
and the tension between the demands for professionalization and those for intellectual autonomy. He observes that the expansion of the university system has led to a dilution of symbolic capital and an intensification of the competition for it. The book also addresses the role of the academe in society at large. Borgio contends that the academic field has a dual role. It is a guardian of cultural heritage and intellectual autonomy, but it is also a field deeply implicated in the reproduction of social hierarchies. Academics, therefore, find themselves in a paradoxical situation, simultaneously critical of social inequalities while upholding a system that perpetuates these very inequalities. In Homo Academicus, Bourdieu is not just a detached observer. He explicitly situates himself within the field he analyzes. He reflects critically on his position and trajectory within the academic hierarchy, acknowledging the ways that his background has influenced his perspectives and academic practices. By doing so, he demonstrates that no analysis of the academic field can be entirely objective, as the observer is always part of the observed reality. Through his analysis, Bourdieu builds a compelling case for the need to engage critically with the structures of academia rather than taking them for granted. He challenges the reader, particularly those within the academic community, to recognize the deeply embedded social dynamics that shape intellectual life. By illuminating the social constructs behind the academic curtain, Bourdieu opens up a space for a more self-aware and reflexive approach to academic practice, one that might begin to address the inequalities and power structures that it perpetuates. In summary, Homo Academicus presents a critical sociological examination of the academic field, revealing it to be a complex, stratified social space, abundant with power struggles and competition, but also marked by a reflexive quest for knowledge and intellectual autonomy. Through his application of key concepts such as habitus, capital, and field, Borgio brings to light the often invisible social forces at play within academia and invites a critical reflection of the role intellectuals play in both the perpetuation and the criticism of social inequalities.